Ladies and gentlemen, many of you asked me how I managed to copy all of my add-ons and all of my UE to the beta client for the dungeons that I've run there and the short answer is I didn't. In this video, I'm going to show you how I managed to build a very simplified and clean UI just using the default capabilities provided by Blizzard. Alright, I'm on a brand new character over here with the default UI and the very first thing that you want to do is press escape, go to edit mode and over here you can select new layout, give it any name that you want and now you are working with this preset. The next thing that you want to do is go back to the main menu, press options and then go to the action bars tab and now you can enable more action bars. I have all of them enabled, I'm going to do this for this test as well, but if you need less, you can enable less. The next thing that you want to do is you can go back to edit mode now and if you click on any of the bars, you're going to see some default options that you have for that specific bar. I'm going to click on the first action bar and hide bar art is something that I recommend because you don't want this extra space and extra graphics on your screen. You can also hide the scroll bar if you're not using that. I'm personally not, but if you're using more than one bar at the same place and you're scrolling, then maybe you want to see that. The next thing that you want to do is you can change the icon size. By default, that looks a little bit big to me. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's say, something like um, 80%. And you can do that for every single bar that you're using. So those, those three are going to be my main bars. So I'm going to put them at 80%. And these ones are going to be sidebars. So they're going to be, let's say, even smaller. I'm going to put them at like 60% or something. And all of that, of course, you can customize to your own liking. The next thing you want to do is you want to press save as often as possible because if something happens, your green crashes, uh, etc., you're going to lose all the changes that you made so far. When you start aligning things on the screen, you can press this button over here, which is show grid. This is going to show you squares on the screen, which is going to make it a little bit easier to align things and center them in the middle. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align some things on the screen. I'm going to take my first action bar, put it right over here, right in the middle, because this is the main buttons that I'll be pressing, so I want to see them. This is my secondary action bar, which also contains buttons that I'm pressing all the time. And this one, for now, I'm going to put over here. The small sidebars that have consum consumables, stuff like that, I'm just going to put like down here. I don't care about them right now but you can put stuff on them later. Now, these two bars at the side, I'm gonna use for things like Hearthstone, some toys that I'm using, and things that I definitely do not press all the time. In fact, I press them once in a blue moon. So what I'm going to do here is take the bar visibility. You can, of course, change the scale, but by default, this is set to always visible. Instead, I'm going to set it to out of combat. This way, I'm going to see these bars only when I'm not in combat, and when there's a fight going on, they're not going to convolute my screen. Another thing to keep in mind is you can actually change the way these bars look. By default, they stack horizontally, but you can make this vertical if you like. And the other thing that you can do is you can control how many buttons there are per each row. By default, it's just one row, but for example, here I'll, I'm going to set it to four. And this pretty much looks like the side buttons on my mouse that I'm using. As you can see, they're always uh, already bound. I'll show you how to bind them in just a second. But this can change the way that a bar looks. And of course, you can also change the scaling and the visibility of those specific bars as well. Another cool thing that you can do is, for example, this bar which contains my main cooldowns. You see some bindings here already. I'm only using six buttons from this bar. And for the other six buttons, I simply do not have key bindings. So the thing that I can do here is I can click on this bar, go to the number of icons display and reduce this down to six, which is going to hide the empty icons. And then you can again move this wherever you'd like to see it on the screen. The next thing that you can do is you can select target and focus, then target yourself, and then you can move those frames wherever you want to see them on the screen. I'm going to put them a little bit closer to my main buttons right here, although we can change this later. And then you can arrange things around them. So I'm going to put my cooldowns on top of my party frame. 
I'm gonna press save again just to make sure everything is set in stone. And then the next thing that I'm going to recommend is, for example, click on the talking hat, which is this annoying prompt that uh, pops up every time something is uh, is talking. You can move that somewhere out of your main area because usually you don't want to see that. And you can do the same with the raid frames and the boss frames. Uh, these are uh, we're going to talk about them a little bit later as well. But make sure to position everything where you wanted it to be. You can hide them after that. And then for the cast bar, of course, you can also put that into an appropriate place. You can change the scale of it if you want to make it a little bit bigger. And make it, of course, especially if you're a caster, uh, place it on a place on the screen where you're going to be able to see it. Save again. And now we're ready to move on to the next part. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about is keybinds. You can press escape, go to options, and there is a key binding step over here. The first thing that you can do is, of course, click on the quick key binding mode. You can key bind the buttons one by one over here, but that's definitely more complicated. If you click on the quick key bind mode, you get to this uh, screen where all the buttons here, you can just hover over them press a button and they're going to be assigned and key bound to that button. So for example, if I press two here, this button is now bound to two. And if I press one here, this button is bound to one. You can do this for every single action bar and every single button. So uh, definitely that's the recommended way to do that. And don't forget there's an extra action button. Uh, so you can bound this as well. And uh, click OK. Of course, this is going to save everything. If you go back to the edit mode, there's advanced options here. And uh, over here, you can actually click the extra abilities. This is actually that button, so you can move it on appropriate place as well. And once we have everything bound, we're ready to move on to the party and the raid frames. Now, before we talk about the click casting binding and how you're going to heal and cast your spells on certain people, we actually need to talk a little bit about the party and the raid frames. Now, in order to test this, you can actually move them on the screen by going in the edit mode, uh, enabling party frames over here, and then you can move them anywhere, but you will not be able to see them once you exit the uh, edit mode. So, in order to fix this basically I can give you the following tip you can go into the menu and queue for a follower dungeon um, you can select any of these doesn't really matter you can select your role you can find a group and these queues are basically uh, insta pop once they pop you can accept it And then once you get into the dungeon, you're going to be able to see the party frames and changes that you make to them, which is going to make it a little bit easier to configure everything. All right, so now that we're here, obviously we can see our party frames, which are in a very inconvenient place right now. And the first thing that you can do is go back to edit mode, click on the party frames, and you can use use raid style party frames, which I totally recommend because this makes the party frames to look a little bit more healer friendly and you can easily see how much help everybody has. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do for these party frames is I'm going to press this button, use horizontal layout. You can use the vertical depending on what you want to do with your UI. But for this one, I'm going to press this button because I want them to be in a line below my main buttons over here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and a little bit higher, just like this. All right, that looks uh, a little bit better. And once you do that, the next thing, of course, save. The next thing you want to do is you can press escape, go back to the options and get to this tab over here. The interface. Now, the first thing you want to do is you probably want to use Splater, but click on this button, larger nameplates. That's going to make the uh, enemy nameplates a little bit bigger. And then you want to scroll all the way down here to the raid frames because we're basically using the raid frames for our party frames and click on the display class colors. Now, you can use that to see the name and the classes of the players in your group. But of course, if you want to see the default green ones, you can do that as well.
All right, and now that we have the party frames ready, I actually want to be able to heal these people by just clicking on their name blades with different key bind combinations with my mouse. So in order to do that, you're actually going to press escape, go back to options, go back to key bindings and click on this button, click casting. This displays a new window over here where you can drag different spells from your spell book into this mouse over cast window. So let's say I want to bind something to my healing search. I'm going to drag it over here and now I can use a key bind with my mouse on top of the spell. So I'm just going to press mouse right button over here and then let's say uh, I want to pick up my riptide. So I'm just going to drag this over here as well and I'm going to bind this to my mouse middle button. You can use different combinations. So let's say for my healing wave, I actually have want to have a key modifier. So I'm going to press control right mouse, mouse button. As you can see, this is now displayed here and this is bound to that specific uh, button as well. So now I'm going to press save just with uh, those three buttons. And let's say I want to cast a uh, healing surge on myself. So I'm going to press the right, right mouse button and it casts. If I use the control modifier, it casts healing wave. And if I press the middle mouse button, it is a riptide. The good thing about this party frames is that they display some of the buffs that you have. So for example, over here, as you can see, I can see the riptide available on myself. And if I cast it on other people, it is displayed on them as well. Just to give you more examples of that, let's go back to options, key bindings, click casting again. And here I'm going to drag my earth shield over here and bound it to, let's say, control left mouse button. Save again. And now if I press it to that person and that person, you can see the debuff is displayed along with the riptides, which is very convenient for the Blizzard default UI. Now, I'm going to say two more things. As you can see, uh, once I heal myself, there's that bar that pops below me. That's quite annoying to see, at least for me. So you can press escape, go to options, go to combat and uncheck this box, personal resource display. This is going to make sure that this is not shown. And of course, you can add recourse or something else later if you want to see some extra stuff from your UI. And then, of course, the other thing to mention here is you can always press escape, go to edit mode, enable the raid frames, and basically you can put them at the same position. They're going to replace the party frames in raid, etc. Um, and then you can have that available as well. The next thing that you have to do, of course, is put some spells on those bars. So you can open your spell book by just pressing P and then you can start dragging uh, spells on your action bars. They're very conveniently popping up once you select a spell uh, on top of your UI. So, for example, I can put my uh, Ascendance over here. I can put my Primordial Wave over here. And of course, you can do all of these things uh, until you feel the action bars. If you're not using some of them, again, you can go back to the options and reduce the amount of action bars that you see on your screen. Last but not least, keep in mind that you can keep making changes and adjusting things one by one. So I can go back to edit mode now. I can move my party frames a little bit up because they're not close to my bars right now. I can also move the target and personal frames a little bit downwards because they're way too high. When I press save, all of this is applied and the best part is when you go to a new character you can press edit mode and you can select that layout from the drop down menu everything you've done including key binds etc is going to be applied to this new character and the only thing you have to do is just drag new spells from your spell book to your bars and you can just start playing So we made this UI, you can see slightly different version in the beta footage on my channel, but is this enough and can we go without adding any add-ons at all? And the answer to this question is almost. The default capabilities that Blizzard provide are pretty good, but there are a few small things that are missing and they can actually force you to use add-ons. One of the major things is tracking debuffs on players, different magic, poison, disease, the spells. They are there, but you have no control on how they look, where they are displayed, no ways to customize them and no way to control what is displayed and what is not. 
So for that sole reason you might be better off just using an add-on like Grid 2 or Voodoo or the other option is to find recourse for everything that you need to track but this of course is going to be a little bit bothersome and harder to do. When it comes to keybinds everything is perfect apart from the fact that you cannot bind anything to your mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down this is actually very useful for healers because you have to extra easy to access keybinds and the Blizzard UI thinks that they're only designated to zoom in and zoom out so it doesn't allow you to do click casting with them. Another small inconvenience is that the action bars do not have the option to be shown on mouse over. That's one of the main reasons I'm using Bartender but this one is small and you can slow it and use the default frames if you are fine with that. When it comes to enemy frames though, you're definitely gonna be using Plater or something similar because the defaults here are actually this small. They are not customizable at all and they don't display enough information whatsoever. And last but not least, we have to mention this, you are going to need weak auras. There's simply no way to play without them because there are so many things in the game that you need to track and the default Blizzard UI simply ignores them. Buffs procs, stacks, all of this might make a button glow on your bars but that's everything that Blizzard provides and there's no additional information about duration, number of stacks, things like that. So you simply need weak ores for everything to be complete and feel natural. I do have separate videos on my channel talking about different weak ores that could be useful so check them out. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, now get out of here.